Childbirth in Kenya is an event that most Kenyan women look forward to. Loved ones and family members can hardly wait for the arrival of the little bundle of joy. However, for some, the event is followed by a never-ending nightmare. Many women in rural areas cannot access quality health care during their labor period. I am Weston Hisa. I am a consultant, obstetrician, gynecologist, and fistula surgeon working at the Kenyatta National Hospital. And uh, I prepare uh, women who have gotten damage of their bladders and urethra during childbirth, the so-called vesicle vaginal fistula. And this is a common thing uh, uh, or condition in our setup. The majority of our patients, actually over 90% of our patients, suffer childbirth injuries because one, they are not able to access free um, medical care as fast as they need it when they are in labor. And uh, for various reasons, uh, the, sometimes our facilities are so far away that they can't access it. In some cases, there is obstructed labor, putting both mother and baby at risk. And sometimes one or both die. The woman gets damaged when the baby cannot negotiate through her vagina to come out to successfully. More often, the babies also die, and sometimes even the mothers die. The lucky ones escape with a condition that takes away their social standing. Having given birth at 12 years, Carol knows this only too well. Me, Shida, Nilianza, Nikiwa na miaka kumina miwele, Likuwa two or three. Sikuwa ni naelewa ni nini naendelea. Likuwa na jipata tu makojoi natoka kila wakati. Siezi sema nata kukojua. Ama siezi isikia. Sa ilikuwa inatoka tu peke yake. Watu vile walipata ni hivo. Walishindu wa ni nini naendelea. Wakasema hiyo ni kulaniwa. Wakasema maybe nilikosea mtu. Niende niombe mzama. Nikashindu wa sasa nitaanzia wapi. Kila mtu waka jitenga. Sani likuwa tuna shoshu wangu peki yake. Na ana uwezo wote. Sasa hata pesa kwa nayo enye ningeza kuenda na hospitali. Fistula has been described by the World Health Organization as the single most dramatic aftermath of neglected childbirth, which is a rampant problem in rural Kenya. It is estimated that only 44% of Kenyan women deliver under a skilled health worker. Globally, 100,000 new obstetric fistula cases result from childbirth each year. More than 2 million women live with fistula worldwide. Most women with fistula suffer in silence. It took Carol a long time to find help. Ilikatu, bakayo, five years. Nikaka, ilipofika 207, jo nikaenda Nairobi, nikakuja uku Nairobi. Kukana mama mwingine hapa, alikuwa mesema nikuja ni msaidia kuangalia mtoto. They come to us as a very miserable patients because one, they don't know what is a vistula. And it is very hard to say you are suffering from passing urine or stool. It's a very difficult situation to tell anybody. Some they don't, don't share with anybody. We have been repairing patients living with this tour for almost 30 years. You, they developed this tour when they are young girls and they had to repair them when they are 72 years old. Most relatives of fistula victims do not know what to do in such cases. Peter's wife, Isabel, got fistula after delivering her second child, now one month old. <laughs> Nikona bibi moja, alipato na shida ya fistula, alafu kwa hiyo muda nilishindo asa nitaeza fanya nini. Wakati alikuwa nilisikia mepatikana hiyo shida niliona ni kama mwisho wetu umefika. Sasa kulingana vile majirani walisikia atio, amekuwa na hiyo shida, waliona ni kama wataeza, tuliona ni kama wanatutenga. Kasabu wa wajai sikia shida kama hiyo kama hali tunaishi. Nilipata mimba na nikaenda hospitali kuzaa. Wakaniambia nikona pipi. 
Sasa bila walinipima kwenda kuzaa mtoto eh, next day kulala nikaanza kukojwa na kutoka na mkojo. Nimekaa tu kwa nyumba the whole month nikiwa tu nimejurumia juu ukitaka kutembea unaona au uko comfortable unaona kama kuna kitu kuna kitu ambaye inatendeka. For teenagers like Ida and Janet the first delivery was quite unpleasant. Nilikuwa na mimba alafu nikaenda usi nikaza nikakaa wiki moja ndio nikagundua niko na hii ugonjwa nilikuwa na shida baada ya kujifungua nilijifungua last year ilikuwa 2012 vanya nilijifungua nikawa na shida ya kwenda choo nilikuwa nikienda choo kama ni ngumi itatoka hapo lakini kama ni nyepesi yenye itaanza kutoka these women have recently undergone repair at Kenyatta National Hospital's Clinic 66. Kenyatta National Hospital has the largest VVF repair center in Kenya. This has been made possible by the Flying Doctors Society of Africa. Since its inception, the society has donated the equivalent of 1 billion shillings to the spread of medical outreach in Africa. I am Dr. Eunice Moringo Kirine. I am the chairperson of the Flying Doctors Society. The reason why I joined the society, which is I'm talking about 30 years ago, was I was very attracted uh, by the work which was being done by this organization. One of the founders, Sir Michael Wood, had come to, to Kenya and realized the need to take specialist services to hard to reach areas within East Africa. So he learned how to fly and uh, once, once he learned how to fly he became a flying doctor and that's where the Flying Doctors was born. And uh, in 1971 he decided to create an avenue through which people could contribute as friends and as individuals across the world and corporates could contribute to the work of the Flying Doctors by donating a small sum every year. So he started a membership organization with a lady called uh, Madi Dimot, who was an American lady, very passionate uh, philanthropist who had come to East Africa and then felt very passionate about the work of flying doctors. So she's the one who carried the flying doctors all through the 70s and the 80s, trying to make sure Michael Wood could actually do his work. Uh, Dr. Michael Wood also worked with Dr. Anspori, who was also uh, a flying doctor, we used to call her Mama Daktari. And so they were really the engines behind the organization. And from that, um, the Flying Doctors Society always felt that it was making sure that these doctors could be able to carry out their work. When somebody talks about the women health or health of women, it's not very attractive. And we felt, at least uh, the Flying Doctor Society of Africa, felt that other places were too crowded. Yet we had this real and threatening condition, which for many years has been covered, has been sat on, both by the Ministry of Health, which should know better, and indeed by the global uh, world, uh, so to speak. So we decided that we would like to pay more attention to uh, the fistula program. And the way we started it was very interesting. Uh, we started by educating through the radio, uh, informing people about this condition. And within a very short time, we realized that it was not just one place where fistula exists, the problem exists. It's actually across the whole country. Our core business really as the society, we've got a specific mandate here, is, uh, is to really spread health care, expert health care, to the neediest of the community, uh, primarily in Kenya, but also in the region. Uh, we do have programs, for example, in Tanzania, and also Uganda. And the way we do that is we really take doctors, expert doctors, uh, professionals, to the very remote parts of this country. Uh, we fly them there, we leave them there for two or three days, 
they do their specialities in any given uh, remote area that hasn't got those specialists. And then we bring them back here. And we either have our own doctors here or we actually work in coordination with hospitals like Kenyatta National Hospital where they also lend us our specialists from there. Another aspect of our work here is what we call charity evacuations. If we find, for example, we get a call from Mandera or Samburu or any of those remote places that haven't got special as, uh, services, we get a call that maybe a lady has got complicated pregnancy or delivery problem. We do send an aircraft to evacuate that particular lady to the nearest facility, most likely to Nairobi here, so that she can actually be given that specialized attention. We do have a membership arrangement whereby we in fact invite people to be members of the society. We are a society and people become members of the society uh, and it's on 1,500 shillings a year where you can then become a member. Now through that membership we guarantee you in fact some medical evacuations and we've got def different cat categories. We have got the individual categories whereby you as a Kenyan or any other you can become a member. We have also membership for corporates if an organization has staff that maybe do lots, you know, lots of work out there. We do have that corporate membership. We also have got membership for families uh, so that you can come as a group. We also have membership for tourists who come here, for example, for two weeks. Uh, they can take a membership for two weeks. And with that one, when they're here and they're out there with their safari, uh, um, you know, whatever it is, and anything happens to them, then we get called in and we evacuate them to, to Nairobi. And in fact, we can even do arrangements that we can ev evacuate them to, 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 to their home um, base or whatever it is. Recently, the Rotary Club of Essendon, Australia, presented a cheque of 11 million Kenya shillings at a ceremony held at KNH on 19 September 2013. KNH, as the largest VVF repair centre, received 3 million Kenya shillings of that amount which will go a long way in carrying out fistula repairs, training medical personnel, and building capacity on the ground to deal with future cases of fistula. Kenyatta National Hospital receives 400 VVF-related cases each year. Close to half of the 1,000 VVF cases reported nationally in Kenya. My name is uh, Mrs. Aris Karanja. I work in Kenyatta National Hospital, daycare center. These are two theater station and eight, clinic 66 in reproductive health, which is a specialized unit. I'm a nursing officer. In these two theaters, we take care of patients who have got rectal vaginal vistula, and these patients, they come to us as they are prepared to for theater. And when they come, some are, they cannot be able to pay or to afford the fee. So at uh, this juncture, we are very, very pleased because we have the flying doctors who have really come to give service or to support most of the clients who cannot be able to support themselves and also to support others who are in the group. We are happy because we see after that the outcome, the clients are happy. And also even the staff, they become motivated. You see the results of the operations together with the other supportive staff and the other doctors within the department. My name is Connie Maina, and uh, two years ago, I relocated to Australia, Melbourne. And uh, I've been a fundraiser and a communicator. Uh, that's the career that I've been doing for the past you know, number of years. And for me, the beauty of seeing a woman dignity, um, you know, a woman feeling that I can actually face the world once again, because I can imagine um, you get a child, you've got all the dreams in the world of having a beautiful child, but then it turns back to you that actually become an outcast because of a sickness that you don't have even money to repair, you know, to, to, to kind of um, go to hospital. A fistula cost about $350, you know, one person. And that's very little money if you look at it. But how many Kenyans will afford 
350, especially if they're coming to such remote areas uh, to get them repaired of fistula. And um, a woman, once a woman gets that repair, I can see the difference because I saw it when I was here. I've seen it even today when I visited the, um, the hospital and saw the women who have been repaired. They completely look as new people. And some women have lived with this for years. I remember one woman that was repaired. She had this for over 30 years. So you can imagine being chased away from home, being called an outcast, leaking for 30 years. Your husband will never come across you, you know, near you. You'll never have more children. It is devastating. And for me, is that restoring of human dignity and getting a woman to be a woman. That's what gave me that motivation to go out there and say, I'm not going to live in a comfort zone. I'm going to work hard and make sure that we get funds to support women back at home. We'd like to, be able to share our, our vision with uh, any prospective donor because as I've already said, we have already some people who are working with us. I've just told you, for example, this Rotary Club of Essendon in Australia. And because of the noble nature of this particular cause, they were able to raise that. Now we want to use, for example, that club in, 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 in Australia to, to even spread the word further. Here in Kenya, as I was saying, we are working with, for example, the banks I've mentioned, the Consolidated Bank. They are very good sponsors for us. We've got Citibank, which is an American bank, very good sponsors for, you know, for, for our programs. The same thing with, with the Organization of Women in Trade and so many others, through, in fact, our corporate members and so on, they do now want to partner with us in, 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 in this work. Every year, about 400 women undergo fistula repair, partly due to the efforts of the society. For Isabel and these women, life will never be the same again. Their heads bowed in shame have been lifted up, nightmares now replaced with dreams. All they see is a bright future. Naweza furahia sana kuendelea na masomo na nikuwe someone somewhere in the future. Sasa naona mambo itakuwa mzuri sababu amerekebishwa na daktari wa flying doctors kutoka Kenyatta huko Kenyatta. Mi after surgery ile nilitolewa nilisikia vizuri hata nikienda nyumbani niko shua nitapona na nitarudi kwa kazi zangu za kawaida sitasumbuliwa na mkojo tena. Juni Get involved in the process of reclaiming women's dignity by donating funds towards the work that Flying Doctor Society of Africa is doing. With only 350 US dollars, you can change a woman's life forever. Get involved today.